There are more ships than ever travelling the world's oceans. Large cargo vessels hauling massive loads and facing tight deadlines. For a century, the Panama Canal has been the crucial shortcut between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Instead of a hazardous four-week journey around South America, ships can cut across Panama in 10 hours. So if someone wants to evade a 9,000 mile trip, they're going to go through the Panama Canal. The canal is approximately 80 kilometers long and uses a system of locks, that is compartments with entrance and exit gates, to lift the ships from sea level to the level of Gatun Lake, 26 meters above sea level. Ships then sail the channel through the continental divide. You're standing here in the middle of the jungle often and uh, all of a sudden behind you, you see a ship floating by. Pretty amazing. Now this engineering marvel is facing a serious challenge to keep up with modern demand. The number of ships using it has risen from 1,000 a year in 1914 to 14,000 today. Delays and congestion are common. For the canal to remain efficient and economically viable into the 21st century, a dramatic engineering overhaul is needed. In 2007, the Panama Canal Authority, or ACP, launched the Panama Canal Expansion Program. And CH2M Hill is serving in a program advisory role for this immense undertaking. The relationship between CH2M Hill and uh, the ACP, our client, is very close. We are included in all significant decision making. We have an integrated team. We actually function within the team. Though we are advisors, we actually are part of the team. One of the first roles we have is mentoring. We have very experienced uh, individuals here, very senior individuals with, with lots of talent in various areas, document control, project controls, uh, construction management, program management. Our goal is to provide the ACP with both the training and the mentoring so that when we leave, the ACP will be able to function as a program or construction management unit on future projects. The expansion includes adding a third set of locks. The new locks will provide another lane of traffic, doubling the canal's tonnage capacity and allowing the transit of much longer, wider ships through the historic waterway. On the Pacific side of the canal, the new set of locks is being built southwest of the current Miraflores locks. On the Atlantic side, the new locks are being built to the east of the existing Gatun locks. The new lock chambers are wider, deeper and longer, at 427 metres long, 55 metres wide and 18.3 metres deep. So big you could lay the Empire State Building flat in each lock chamber. What you see is the lock's middle chamber and um, we have uh, three chambers but each chamber has a set of uh, tower cranes and at one time, we had about 39 to 40 tower cranes working in all three lock chambers. One innovation here is that they are using water-saving basins to reuse some of the water so that the new larger locks only consume the same amount of water as the existing locks. And this is important because there's only a finite amount of water that's available. And so the Canal Authority has to manage that carefully. In addition to the new locks, there will also be new approach channels, including the 218 metre wide channel at Miraflores. Some 50 million cubic metres of material is being excavated along the 6.1 kilometre route. Both canal entrances are being dredged, as are the existing navigational channels in the Culebra Cut and Gatun Lake, which is also being widened. To produce the huge quantities of concrete required for the construction work, new industrial parks have been built. Basalt rock is extracted from nearby excavation areas, crushed and used as aggregate and sand for concrete mixes. What you're seeing behind me is the aggregate crushing plant and the uh, concrete production plant. Both are supposed to be the largest in the world. Basically, they've taken boulders 
uh, the size of Volkswagens and crushed them down into fine sands. Over behind here, uh, where the sand sat, is the uh, concrete production facilities. One of the challenges with this project has been the concrete itself. As you can see behind me, there's a lot of concrete here. Uh, maintaining the quality of the concrete within the uh, limit specified by the designer is something that uh, we want to assure and uh, that's part of our role is uh, working with the contractor and the client to assure that these quality requirements are met. The new locks will have 16 rolling gates operating from concrete recesses located perpendicular to the lock chambers. What we have here uh, behind me is the uh, the new gates for the, um, the Atlantic and the Pacific locks. These gates were manufactured in uh, Shimalai, Italy, and have been transported over here on ship. And then they've been placed onto this parking area that was specially constructed just for the gates. Well, just to give you a, a concept of how big these gates are, I'm about six foot tall. This gate here is 99 feet tall. Uh, so it's about the size of a 10-story building. It's a pretty massive operation just getting it here and getting it moved into place. Right behind me is uh, locker number two, each blocks, and each, each lockhead has a two recess which is 30 foot wide, and that's where the, uh, our uh, gates will be sliding in and out. This incredible project is continuing the legacy of the original canal providing a basis for ongoing growth in Panama. It is also a great opportunity for those working on it. I've been here four years working on this project and uh, the opportunity to come down here was the opportunity of a lifetime in my opinion. I felt like I've been um, walking in the footsteps of giants, uh, coming down here and seeing what was done a hundred years ago and under much harsher conditions than uh, we're working under now. Uh, they put together a, uh, a canal and a lock system from scratch and to see that and then to be part of that a hundred years later uh, doing this expansion is just you know something that's been a, a real thrill to me and uh, it's going to be a career topper for me. I think that the CH2 staff has really risen to the occasion and done a tremendous amount of work We've been able, I believe, to make a real difference where, where it really mattered. 